Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 249 for this uh, Tuesday, May 19th, 2015. I, well, I'm used to that. I'm saying that daily on the mini Awesome Cast, so we just do that now. So there you go. Uh, anyways, this is the uh, podcast from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron. We talk geeky things. We talk, talk techy things from the flyover states and uh, and have a good time here. We're live at live.awesomecast.net. Also live from Studio B is Chilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? How's it going? Awesome, awesome. Hey, camera's looking better every week, I swear. Uh, I'm trying and I'm trying to mess now messing around with some of the shades and stuff in the in, with the window trying to get the lighting a little Maybe better. Maybe a little less backlight, but we'll we'll work on that. We'll work, we'll work you up. It looks good. Looks good. I hope it's coming over the Wirecast the same way I'm seeing it on your your pure feed. So, uh, but anyways, yes, like I said, you can join us live at awesomecast.net every Tuesday around six p.m. No, seven p.m. Eastern okay. time, and uh, you can also join us online, uh, awesomecast on Facebook and the Facebook group on Google Plus on the Twitters itself, and also please follow us and subscribe, rate us, uh, all kinds of stuff. Even if you're not on iTunes, if you're not a regular iTunes user, if you happen to have it on your computer or something. Please look up the Awesome Cast or anything else, uh, anything else Sorgatron Media that we're doing around here that you might be listening to. Subscribe, rate, especially at the very least, subscribe to it. Even if you never even touch iTunes, it will help the show, and we re- really appreciate that to help get the word out here for what we're doing around here. So, and uh, and, and, and of course, drop us a line. And, and oh, patreon.com slash awesome cast if you'd like to support the show. Uh, we are working on sponsors, but we'd love if you guys get involved and we don't need to do that. And uh, we're got, working on some goodies and stuff uh, for you guys to, to help out. You know, uh, I subscribe to several of the shows that I listen to, Cord Killers, uh, the Daily Tech News Show, for instance. I'm giving a couple bucks every month, and it's really cool. And, and, and I know they give a lot of stuff, and we're trying to get that started here. We got some people contributing over at Wrestling Mayhem Show as well and putting some money into that and uh from our great great community over there and we'd really appreciate if anybody digging the awesome cast really finds value in a lot of the discussions we're having here and the new interviews that we're doing with awesome chat please 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 uh, go to uh, patreon.com slash awesome cast and we also have a link over that awesome and uh and, and and thank you thank you advance so let's talk about our awesome things of the week chilla what do you got this week so I've been, I constantly play around with virtualization, so I have to carry less devices. So mine's actually a newer Android emulator that runs on top of Windows. And I'm not 100%. It's from America Megatrends. If you remember those, they made BIOSes. They made all kinds of hardware yeah, back in the day. Yeah, I had one of those uh, tripods, or those uh, motherboards. Tripod, yeah. What the hell? So, so they actually came out with an Android emulator. And I'm guessing it's Ami. Duos? It's A-M-I-D-U-O-S is how it's spelled. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm guessing they're playing on, their, obviously, their name and then the, the fact that you're running Duos's. Everything um, back then was it was AM, AMI, like yeah. AM, A- AMI BIOS and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. it, that's, I think that's what they're kind of, that, that's how they name things, I guess. Right. But it, it, so, so they're, they're, they're letting you run Android right on top of, of Windows um, yeah. and I've used, I've used other apps like, um, Android X86, uh, which is kind of runs in a virtual machine. I've run BlueStacks. Um, BlueStacks has really poor performance if, if you ask me. Um, but they seem to have gone to great lengths to provide a pretty good experience. And one of the things that I'm interested in playing around with as well is they have kind of an input mapper. Um, they have some extra camera capabilities, some GPS. Uh, if your device has hardware GPS in it, it can, it can leverage that. So they seem to be taking the Android virtualization to the next level. I want to do some, some testing on it that I, I haven't gotten to do yet, where a lot of the Android VMs or virtualized environments come up as they're rooted. Um, so depending, some apps that won't run on rooted devices um, won't run but one of, one of the things that I noticed right out of the box for them is their app store is a little more polished because they, they do give access to the Android or the um, 
uh, what's called Amazon App Store, um, as well as there's some workarounds to get the actual Google Play Store. So pretty much anything you can get on Android, you should be able to easily load up. And when you think about trying to do things, specific things with uh, Instagram or, or products like that that are, that are Android or tablet OS only, or phone OS only that you can't necessarily get on a Windows machine. Um, this is where this is where this comes in handy for me, so I don't have to carry around a backpack with three tablets, two phones, etc. Um, so, I, like I said, the one thing that's really impressed me about this is the it's it's not slow and sluggish. I, I feel like Blue Stacks really just it, it takes a long time to boot. It, it, it's just very sluggish. Their UI, they wrote their own UI, so they have their own loader, um, which takes a little bit of getting used to. And then where you have x86, it's a little bit faster than BlueStacks, but it, it's very quirky with mouse movement and with, with other things where, where, this, where this really shines in its, its processing power and its capability. So I'll... I'll, I'll Provide an update maybe next week on the whole uh, if it if it does show up as 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 rooted, um, but I, I'm really liking this so far. You know, I'm really curious if something like this. Because I, I I just uh, if you see my Twitter, I, I just conducted a class today on Instagram, Snapchat, and Pinterest. And one of the things was you know one of the kind of hangups for me is that you can only do Pinterest or I'm sorry in, Instagram and Snapchat in particular over an app on something like Android, for instance. Mm-hmm. Could this open up a workflow for somebody who's, say, a social media worker that, um, that you know, needs to manage maybe multiple accounts or, or, or wants to be able to do that from their desktop, for instance? You know, is this a, kind of a way around to, uh, and not just Instagram, of course, but, uh, and of course, I'm sure Snapchat and everything, you know, you have to do it more directly, of course. But uh, does that open that up, or is this kind of too heavy of a solution for that kind of situation? You think? I don't think this is too heavy because I mean it's pretty much any any machine with at least two gig of RAM. I, I'm not mm-hmm. sure it's going to be. I have four gig in my is machine it, and it runs extremely I, I, well. I'm not. I'm but, the heavy as in is it too much to do just to take care of that task for a social media person? I, I don't think so because it's it's not especially with like this and blue stacks. It's mm-hmm. not go find this virtual machine, go find this, configure this, configure that. BlueStacks and, and this product allow, it's pretty much a run a setup and you're, you're good to go. Okay. If you can configure your own Android device with a Gmail account, you can figure this out. Um, and and I, to, to the point of, I, I think this is the perfect type of tool for those, for those individuals so they don't have to go out and buy additional hardware i'd hate to see someone have to go out and buy an ipad just so they could jump on instagram and and snapchat you know what i mean right right and that's the kind of thing i'm talking about and you know thankfully most people have an iphone an android something like that so Mm -hmm. they can do something that but there is the problems of uh you know managing accounts you know and and you know what we talk about is like i have problems managing my own account and i only have one client that i've started an instagram for and we started one for wrestling mayhem show and that gets neglected because it's hard to do. It's hard to remember to go over, take care of this. And well, I have a repost app, but I try to leave it on my iPad and log into the one thing. And it's it, again, just a, it, it's heavy. It's like, yeah, it will stop being lazy and do it. But you want kind of a Hootsuite solution so you can be more effective at it, I guess. So, yeah. And that's where I don't know if this would, I mean, other than logging out of the app and logging back in. Right. I'm not sure. I haven't played around. I know. I know Android x86 allows, uh, it's, it's built on the newer Android, uh, I think it's on KitKat. It's not on Lollipop yet, but it's at least on KitKat. So you can actually add multiple users to the device. So you on the device, you can actually log out and log back in. Mm-hmm. Um, where that, that It's going to take some more trickery on, and, or more knowledge on the use, end user's perspective. Um, it could be as simple, and, and like I said, I haven't played around with trying to get multiple users working with this, um, but it could be if you set up multiple users on your Windows workstation or something like that, you might be able to get this to do multiple users. Mm-hmm. That's something That's something I'll definitely give a try. I know it works with Android x86 because I've definitely done it. Um, I've never tried the multi-user in, in BlueStack or in, in, 
in this one from American Megatrends. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So uh, where can people find this? They can find it. Oh, where did the link go? Do, 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 do. It's A-M-I-D-U-O-S dot com. Awesome. Go check it out. Well, my awesome thing of the week, we've talked about uh, several times on the show in the past, Automatic. It's a, it's a little thing you can get on your car uh, that you connect to the OBD port. I think I got that right. It's that thing that usually you get your diagnostics from, but mm-hmm. it, 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 it turns in, it, it adds this Bluetooth functionality, communicates with your phone and an app on there, Android or iPhone, and gives you a lot of information about your, about, about what's going on on there, basically, right? Uh, well, I got an email today about um, one, they, they got a little bit of a new version uh, coming up, and this is what I'm kind of, I, I'm, I'm trying to see what's going on here, because they do have a new version of the unit that's supposed to do more, and I'm trying to see if this is, you know, I haven't been able to dig enough into this kind of check, but they also have an app gallery. Okay, so their app gallery, this is apps for your automatic, for your phone, so you basically apps for your car. And if we go into it, and let's take a look here at the website, so uh, automatic.com slash apps, if you want to check this out. Uh, you know, cool stuff, like and this one caught my attention, fresh books. I can create invoices from my mileage. And that, that's one of the things I noticed. I saw you posted this, and I actually read about this this afternoon as well. Mm-hmm. And one of the, one of the companies that I noticed was Concur, mm-hmm. which is a, which is another expense system. And I know a lot of large enterprises that use uh, the, the Concur app and use Concur services. So much like FreshBooks, I see that's where I think this is perfect. So a lot of this is trip tagging and even I, I, I opened up the app. I hadn't opened up the, the app for a bit. We actually have it on our car, the order of our cars that doesn't do the long distance as much anymore. So it's become a slightly yes, less useful. The car really uh, sits more than more often than not and it's more short local trips. So it's not quite as effective as it used to be for me. But still, you know, a lot of times that's what I take on certain uh, trips because I'm carrying a lot of equipment locally at least for productions so to have that mileage and report that because even you know uh, taxes you're just kind of estimating and i think they mostly just accept that but still to have more of a yeah of course i drove this and it, it but i opened up the app and 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 one there was a few things it, one, they uh, asked me what brand of gas that i use like what level of gas that i usually pick so they can properly uh, uh work out mileage a little a little better Okay, and you can also do trip tagging and say this is a business trip, and that's where this con- this goes over to services. Looks like they're just applying those services to these different, um, um, you know, already out there uh, services like Expensify, Concur, uh, FreshBooks, uh, TripDot, Sherpa Share, Zero. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it, you know about costs, about applying this to your business, and I think that's a tremendous application, and not really a high end one, no. But still, um, they have more. Um, there's a Pebble app, Chilla. That's what I, I just noticed. I, there I is, hadn't scrolled down earlier, but I, I did. There is it. a Pebble app where you parked right on your wrist. Uh, yeah. Nest is is in this. If this, then that. If t- is in there. Jawbone up. Rescue time. Spot angels. Uh, reminders uh, to save you from parking tickets. Yo. Oh no. <laughs> I, I don't understand why that one's in there, but why not? Why not? Yo, yo, yo sounds like something that's from Silicon Valley as a joke, uh, but apparently it's just an app where you send yo to somebody. Mm-hmm. That's it. And now you can do it via your car. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Unmooch, your mechanic, uh, house calls for car repair, license plus, and also stuff for performance, including dash command, OBD fusion, and Harry's time uh, lap timer. So that's for, okay. So it looks like we're able to use, so I have the first generation, kind of the pre-release, like early release unit, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Before, like it was, I think we pre-ordered it and it took a few months to get. So it is that first collection. They didn't even have Android versions of it just yet. And uh, for the, you need the second generation for the stuff like Dash Command, which is real time performance data, Harry's Time Lapper, live metrics and video overlays. Okay, and uh, OBD Fusion's beautiful streaming gauges and indicators. This is like uh, uh, Fuzzy's been on this. Frank's been on here before talking about, and I've seen this in his car where he has an Android and he has an OBD thing, or maybe he Bluetooths so with because he's got kind of newer, fancier cars than us, uh, and and he's able to pull up all these gauges that I don't even know what half of them do. 
right on his Android tablet and just mounts that on his dashboard, and there you go. It looks like this is this appears to be something similar uh, that you can do that. And of course, you need a new unit that uh, it'll it will take advantage of of a few of these newer things. You know, I mean, I have a 2005 car. I, I looked at it and, and low low uh, low fuel. Uh, uh, reminder isn't even an option on there, but I know it is on the newer one, right? So, mm -hmm. and I and I and I've kind of battled with that. Should I get one for the newer car because it is it does have sync and it does have the mileage on there, you know, you know, miles till empty, for instance, and you know the 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 low fuel reminders at fifty and twenty five. You know, it has a few of those bells and whistles already built in, but this makes it worthwhile for me to drop another hundred bucks on a unit and put it in there. Or maybe oh, and it's and you look at you look at the the time they spent on a lot of the the, the apps like the OBD Fusion. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not just I've I've seen where where you take the car in and you plug it in at the at the dealer or at a mechanic and it's like all these crap diagnostics and it's a lot of text -based. Uh, you know, my my dad actually he had uh what was it it was a pontiac firebird or something and he's trying to figure out what was wrong with it it was something with the computer at the time and this is like in the 90s and mm -hmm. he had to go buy the unit hundreds of dollars this unit that spit out a number and you had a giant encyclopedia of all these numbers to find that one number that mattered to you right and now i get it i go you know, i had that pop up i could have taken a mechanic and take and check it out and and all it popped up was says oh it's this look this up on the internet there's actually a button that sends you right to google to look up that code on the internet and says uh yeah you probably need to put some more antifreeze in and i put some more antifreeze in and it went away <laughs> perfect <laughs> that was it and saved me a mechanics trip that's tremendous it already paid for itself like with but, that but, but like you're saying where it just spit out the older the older type stuff just spit out a number mm -hmm. these I, I, like I'm looking at that dash command these are nice polished right Th this is more than an OBD re reader they're they're tapping into a little bit more the unit has a little more to it I think and that's why you need that new unit for this mm -hmm. okay and and I mean I'm not and it's not like I'm driving a performance vehicle it's a we have a Ford Escape and a Buick Rendezvous you know, I mean, very utility vehicles. Okay, not very flashy. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, our friend that has the Audi, he's going to be interested in this. Mm -hmm. And this is cross-compatible. This is iPhone and this is uh, Android at this point, I believe. So you can connect all that stuff. Uh, I, I It's really cool to, uh, you know, because I kind of wonder, it's like, ah, you know, what, what more am I going to be able to do with this? What, what more point is there to it? And uh, other than low jacking my own car and such, uh, but, but seeing that there's even, you know, new features are popping up all the time on that app. And uh, I think it's really cool. It, it's, it's, you know, if you haven't checked it out, it's automatic, automatic.com. And uh, I think it really adds a lot of life to an older car. I think anything after 1996, you can use this with. And most of the features will be there. Like I said, I don't have I don't have the um, um, the uh, uh, low fuel alerts or anything like that. But but there's a lot more. There's crash alert. It will detect if you were in a crash, uh, which that seems simple enough because uh, you, the OBD probably knows if an airbag went off, and it'll automatically call for call 911 and set on your GPS. I think that's pretty significant right there. I think that's worth it to know. If I'm somewhere and something happens, I'll be taken care of. As long as I have cell phone reception. <laughs> and then, do you do you have access to the, their dashboard? Oh, wait, how do you mean? Like like their website, they they show like the the dashboard, mm. and it shows you like all your trips and all your mileage. Oh yeah 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 yeah. You 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 get that too, and I think there might be a web interface for it too. Yeah, there um, there is. That's what I'm actually looking at, and it's actually really nice. To your point of you know business trips and whatnot, it it goes day by day, how many miles, the time of day, what destination point A, point B, point like it just it's really really nice. Mm -hmm, their, mm -hmm. their whole interface is is very well done. Oh yeah, it, it's it's super nice to ha how they do this. Uh, I'm really digging it. Uh, give me a moment. I, I actually I've been playing a little bit with uh, the reflector. I think I have this set up so we can show stuff off on here i actually got to use reflector chill today in class so i was like i, said, I was nice. talking about instagram snapchat i got on the library wi-fi we're at the main branch there carnegie library and uh i was able for the most part i kind of lost the connection a little bit towards the end there uh more towards lunch i 
maybe there's just more people in there and it's kind of hard to do that but um uh but no i i got it and and, and i was able to show everybody uh a little bit of you know again snapchat everything like that uh and it worked out really well and uh like i said with that I'm, I'm trying to let's see if i did this right let's see how this looks uh so if you're on video with us boom oh that didn't work it's a little stretchy let me uh reset this here a little bit so uh oh uh oh it's not working but uh but no you get that you you, you get uh, exactly what you're talking about it gives me a score for the week and, and again like kind of the initial thing was you know let's Let's see if you are heartbreaking, if you're accelerating the stuff that's going to cut down your mileage, more or less, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of let you know, and the unit itself actually kind of dings at you and everything like that, you know, bugs you a little bit. It sounds like an R2-D2 and it gets mad when you've been going too fast. Uh, but uh, but it works out real well. So, wow. Very cool. And, and so does it calculate your score based on mileage per gallon and the hard brakes and the you hard basically, You basically get a point ding every time one of those bad things happens. Uh, okay. So, uh, but no, it's a really cool application. And, and again, you can go through and you can see it actually shows on the map where you've been. Like, wh what was that trip? You know, why, wait, wait, I spent, you know, $6 on gas doing what? And and that's the other thing is, is you know, I kind of, you know, worry about it. It's like, oh, I got to put gas in the car. Oh, it takes so much money for me to go out to this thing because i'm always you know it's a, it's a 30 mile trip i do every monday both ways and uh and you're thinking oh i got i gotta fill a tank oh damn that's another 40 bucks i gotta drop in the tank and and you don't think about it afterwards well how much did i use of that 40 bucks and it's like yeah that that it, it costs you six bucks to do that trip it's like oh that's not that bad and then i'm figuring out i'm like am i making enough for this client to be worth the trip to go visit the client it's another number it's to, fact, to factor that in. And I, I've been very, very aware of that. And I feel better now about going to that client because I'm like, OK, I make this back in like half an hour. I'm good. Yeah, that's that's fine for, for the entire day that I do this. So um, but yeah, I, it's been it's been really nice for that. And again, I think that business aspect is going to be huge for a lot of people for trying this out. You're going to have businesses low jacking their car with this thing and telling people to report in. Uh, well, I, but, especially but, because you can put and looking at their dashboard, I mean, you can show. You can put a whole fleet of vehicles and label them out. So mm -hmm. you could actually do, to your point, with you know figuring out how much it costs for for cars in your fleet of employees or or even your employees' cars. You could say, you know, prove to me that you went from here to here. Put this in your car, and, and to your point, low jacking them. You could actually quickly figure out, you know, your tax breaks. Think uh, you could. There's a lot of data that this thing stores. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So go check it out, automatic.com. I, I definitely highly, highly recommend it. Uh, Chilla, do you like pizza? I love pizza. He loves the pizza. He loves the Slice on Broadway, right? Oh, definitely. I had I ordered three pizzas from Slice on Broadway over the weekend. Jeez, you're a madman. You're an absolute madman when it comes to this stuff. We had we had the, oh, the chicken pesto pie. Mm -hmm. We had the Slaughterhouse Five. Oh, you're making me hungry. We're going to have to go grab another slice. And we had um, just a small cheese mm -hmm. so for those on, people that didn't like massive amounts of toppings. Slice on Broadway. I know a lot of you guys here in the Pittsburgh area listening to this show. And uh, these guys are right down at Beachview. They're in Carnegie, PA. And I talked to Rico last week, and uh, and he's he's really liking to have everybody coming in. Chilla may be a high percentage of the people coming in, <laughs> but uh, but still, it counts. It works. And uh, and, and they really appreciate uh, uh, them supporting uh, great Pittsburgh podcasting with pizza, and uh, we hope you can support them. Uh, drop to either one of their locations and let them know. Let them know you heard about them on Awesome Cast or one of the other podcasts here on the Sorgatron Media uh, uh, Network. You know, it, it helps out, and it's something that we can we can say to. We're we're looking for future advertisers to help grow this show and partnerships and everything. And 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 it's it's really important when they say, "Hey, this works. People are coming in." You know, um, and uh, and 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 it's really cool thanks a lot everybody thanks a lot slice on broadway check them out at sliceonbroadway.com some fantastic pizza salads etc and uh they're on pgh underscore slice on the twitters and slice on broadway on facebook and the instagrams all right chill hey you know i i think i left this over from last week and this was i think this was passed my way 
via uh i they have a name off the top of my head i think it's sloan davidson uh who connected us with the verizon blogger event a while ago uh it's called dinner mode and it's kind of, this could be our app for the week here uh and it's 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 out there you can get it now for iphone it's a <clears throat> fast easy way to free free easy and free way to disconnect from technology and help you be mindful so there you go <laughs> what, so what, what does it do place your phone face down on a stable surface before time runs out enjoy your dinner and you get dinged with well, this is you know we've heard about this before people when they go out that they, they play a game right so, Where, so you put your everybody puts their phone in the middle of the table right right and a lot of times, it's like the first one that picks it up buys dinner or something. Buys dinner for everybody. Exactly. Um, going into this, uh, this this has been out for a little bit since September, and uh, they're they're trying, you know, they're talking about the addiction to technology and everything. Uh, while, while you eat, give yourself a set period of time to be off your phones, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. The time is yours. You can choose to be mindful of your surroundings. You can engage in riveting, you know, the conversation. Um, and giving your brain a, a break, and I think that's really important. We're so turned on all the time and checking things, and I'm responding to the buzzes on my wrist, you know, all the time. And I've been like, uh, I need to take my watch off. Uh, you just need to go ahead and leave this phone off for a little bit. There's been times recently, Chilla, where my phone or my watch, the battery has been running down. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> We're just going to let that run out for a little bit and just let there not be anything for maybe the next hour. And I think it's a really cool app to uh, kind of help along with that. Dinnermode.org if you want to check that out. So, all right, let's get into some news over here. Uh, so, uh, what do you got, Chilla? So I have one of the things I'm actually really, really interested in, and, and I'm interested to see how this fits into maybe it's probably not going to come into your house at first, but it's mm -hmm. LG mm -hmm. has released and unveiled a 55 inch screen. It's OLED. That's 0 0.04 inches thick and weighs 4.2 pounds. You can put it on your wall using a magnetic mat. So it'll be interesting if, if they can actually make this flexible, but the mere depth and weight of it pretty much means that you can put this anywhere. It just looks like it just it just looks like a piece of plastic that she's putting up on the wall in yeah, this picture. It, it's like the weight of a heavy laptop. Yeah. And it's 55 inches. Wow. I mean, I'm thinking I'm thinking of, would, would think about when you walk into a, a fast food type place and they have all the, that signage or a Starbucks or anything like that, all that signage that they have to constantly change and flip. Yeah. Think about if it was just large TV displays that could refresh. My other question is how much heat does this generate? Um, because I don't know you, if you've recently been to like I guess McDonald's is doing this, Burger King, Wendy's around here at least, and, and it's probably becoming pretty prevalent all, all over the place. But they're using screens for their for their menus, mm -hmm. and the one at the Wendy's I know there's a couple kind of vertical displays as you walk towards the register at the newer Wendy's uh, over here on West Liberty, and I've walked by that and feeling the heat generating off of that. Is crazy. I'm guessing it, only because it's so thin. I'm guessing it probably doesn't create that much heat. It can't be nearly as much as those those HD screens, those full on HD screens that they're using there. And you gotta think those are on for, geez, probably all but four hours in a day, right? Mm -hmm. Even less. Well, and, I mean, you. And one of the things they they published in the in their announcement as well is that they're coming out with a 99 inch one of these. Pretty soon this year. I don't even think I have a wall that would have fit the 55 inch version. <laughs> but <you know? laughs> like, like I don't know. I don't think like definitely not in the living room or the dining room. You know, which we've have switched in the past in our organizations in this house. But there, there's just not a space for it for us. Well, but the, but normal Pittsburgh house, way. I guess. You 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 mount this to your ceiling above your bed, so you could just lay down in bed. <laughs> And, and not watch, have to like prop and, yourself up and watch whatever scared. you want. Yeah. That'd be crazy, yeah, because you don't want to put, you know, you don't want to put a, a, a whole screen, a TV above your bed because if it falls on you, if you're crushed. If, you're <laughs> if it falls, you're done. 
you know, <laughs> if this falls on me, you know, this reminds well, me. Of what it's, it's probably heavier than your cat or your dog. <laughs> And that's it. I'm like, oh, oh, I fell down. Oh. <laughs> so don't use sticky tech like I did with the AOL CDs that would <laughs> fall on us in the middle of the night and be like, oh, 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 okay, okay. Oh, the TV fell on us again. Don't worry about it. Um, so, uh, no, that's cool. That's cool. I, again, this has to be, this was one of those concepts that we're not going to see for several years, and they'll keep showing it off at of CES until until we don't care anymore. Till, or until everyone has one. Oh, I don't know about that part. Wait, I'm get. I don't know. I mean, wonder what the cost to generate it is. Hmm. The cost to make it way more expensive than we have. I'm sure. <laughs> so awesome. So uh, you know, some other news from around uh, the Oculus Rift. You need a high-end PC to run that. Yeah, you kind of expected it. They got the specs kind of going out there. Uh, Mac Linux not supported. Not the end of the day for that. But uh, they're going to concentrate on Windows, get it out there. It makes sense. It's the biggest platform. And uh, hopefully we'll get Mac and Linux versions here down the line as well. They say it's not hold- halted. It's just paused for now for the- for those developments. So what are they looking at? According to The Verge over here, uh, like I said, they have the specs uh, for what you'll need to run it. Uh, we're talking about NVIDIA GTX uh, 970 AMD 9- uh, 290. Those numbers mean nothing to me anymore i have i'm just not kept up on specs so i don't know what those equivalents are uh equivalent or greater intel i5 the 4590 model equivalent or greater again i have i5 here i know it's not the same i5 right because it's from like two years ago 8 gigs plus a ram compatible hdmi 1.3 video output uh that makes sense so you're gonna have to have that hdmi in your computer uh that's gonna push through this thing uh two usb 3.0 ports uh can't think of a computer I have that has one, except for maybe my Mac, and then we're already out there. And uh, Windows 7, SP1, or newer. I Specific? Is that hefty, do you think? I think it's a bit hefty. Mm-hmm. And, and, and here, here's the problem is, is that I, I think they need to figure out a way or, or these technologies need to lend themselves better to the console arena. I think you're going to find console gamers ready to adopt these before you will the PC gamer. And maybe I'm completely off on this mm. because I I left the PC gaming world and definitely went to the world of console, um, whether it be Xbox One, Xbox 360. Um, I had a Sega Dreamcast. I, I mean... I, I, I left the PC gaming world a long time ago, and that was primarily because I got tired of, on almost a, a monthly basis, pouring money into a PC to get the next video card with more memory, to get the next NVIDIA chipset. Oh, the NVIDIA chipset isn't compatible with this game. Now I need to get the ATI technologies graphic chipset for this and mm-hmm. like there were there were a couple times where i was actually flip flopping video cards in and out of a rig so i could play specific games holy crap that's dedicated uh, <laughs> I mean, that's one thing back in the day when we had 3d fx cards right but uh that that's pretty incredible mm-hmm. I, it, that, I was switching from an nvidia card to an ati card back and forth depending on a, a couple of the games i was playing so Jeez. that's where i Back then, I I got the I think it was really the first Xbox that kind of turned the corner for me, and I, I kind of left rigs or continually updating PCs kind of behind with that, and that's where I think when you look at things like the Oculus Rift and the Hololens, and the, I feel like if if they want to get a lot of market penetration, they should probably start with the console gamers. Certainly, I, and I don't know if I agree with that. I, I think uh, I, I think PC or PCs more apt to try something like this, if anybody is. And those people that have these rigs and are updating the rigs and doing weird swap outs with their video cards, they're the ones that are going to try this. Uh, and I think that's where it's going to be perfected. Then we get our Mac versions, our Linux versions, our console versions. Like I think I I think that's how it goes. You know, you're going to start with those early adopters, those more willing uh, peripherals as a role have not done well in the console world i mean think about the the be- the probably the best that it has was the wii with their menagerie of 
things for it you could buy. <laughs> like, oh, I got to get a controller, and I got to get a nunchuck. What I need another nunchuck for this game. Uh, you know, I mean, that's that's where you start losing people. And I think, you know, the Kinect, you know, look what happened, the backlash for Xbox One with the Kinect. Not a great history there. Yeah, and, and I feel like people needed to really... I feel like you're you're making a mistake if you didn't get if especially the Xbox One if you didn't get it with a Kinect with, and and primarily just for the voice command but but I have a very specific use case for that so I'm probably the, the oddball out and that's where I'm looking at I, I mean I don't, I'm I, when I look at the late teen early twenty how many people are dumping money into high-end pc equipment and like i said maybe my finger just isn't on that pulse anymore mm-hmm. but i'm just not i'm not hearing or seeing anyone i work with bragging anymore about hey i got this video card or i i swapped out this motherboard it's it's more and more i'm hearing people buying kind of off the shelf out of the box equipment right right uh, you know it, it really my philosophy is always um Right now is the time to have a game, have a PC, because you can play the things that you haven't bought the big console for yet. You know, um, everybody's complaining. Ah, I can't do this. You know, uh, you know, uh, I could maybe pick up Titanfall or the new Call of Duty on my on my computer. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm good to go. And and for me, I guess I'm in a different spot because I'm always buying every few years a new MacBook. And will for the foreseeable future, which I can throw windows on. And I'm always going to have something a little, you know, if there's a Mac version, great, I'm going to do that. I'm going to gravitate towards that. But I keep up with it. And I'm also patient. So I clean up on Steam sales on all those games that I wanted last generation. So, um, but that's me. You know, I'm not, I'm not keeping up. I'm just playing when I can. Right. And, but I think you're like, you're talking about you're playing on Steam and you're playing on, you're playing some stuff that's, it's not as graphically intense. No, no, but I do have the option that I could go and snag whatever the new game is, as long as it's a cross-platform one, right? As long as it's not Halo, for instance. It's going to be on Steam. It's going to be on Origin. It's going to be on something that I can get on a Mac slash PC. And you have that option. And that lets me bide my time a few years until I decide which of the two, three consoles I want to get. And hopefully a lot cheaper than anybody did two or three years ago. Right. So it, it pays to be patient and smart with these things, I think. So it pays your wallet, that's for sure. But again, I'm not a I need to buy the game this week kind of guy. So, I mean, well, the, and I'm hardly finding I'm hardly finding time to play anything except for WWE Immortals on my phone these days. So there's that. Uh, that's a whole other other issue for a different podcast. So, um, Let's see uh, what we got here. <laughs> no more greasy fingers on your screens. What is this about? So, so I thought this was interesting. So KFC mm-hmm. oh. is actually building a blue. They're building Bluetooth parable keyboards mm-hmm. in, into a mat on their serving trays. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so if you're sitting there eating greasy food and you want to text or you want to do whatever, you can actually. This is write- the tray that the food comes on. Yes. And it's a Bluetooth keyboard. <laughs> exactly. Do you just throw it away at the end? No, I think it's it might be washable. I'm, I'm guessing. And I'm guessing they're not going to just throw it away. How much could this possibly be? Like to like, am I getting a special meal for this? Like, yeah, it's completely pairing with it, and it's like, wow, wow. This is not. I, also, this is not in English. Oh wait, this is for this is for Germany, isn't it? Is it? Um, That's right. This is Germany. They're not even doing this in America, unfortunately. Ah, uh, yet. And that's it. It's a mat. And that's all there is to it. it I mean, that's there's awesome. there's Logitech keyboards available mm-hmm. here in the states that are you know spill proof. Dump them in water. Dump water on them, not dump them in water. But it, that that kind of mimic this concept. Um, I just find it completely interesting that that the fast food or any any market for that matter. I mean, think about if you walked into a restaurant and you could put your phone off to the side and you don't have to worry about getting any food on your device, mm-hmm. pretty much, other than if you actually move the food over and spilled it right on top of the device. But I don't know. I, I think the technology is really cool, and where, where I look at this going is. Sooner or later, these are going to be able to be rolled up and you take it with you. 
I love it. I love it. This is the next step, and KFC is breaking new ground in Germany. Of all of all the people, all right? Of all the places. Germany, come on. Send one over. Do we have any German fans out there? We got somebody in Russia. Maybe you can get one on. Maybe he's a little closer, right? So, uh, <laughs> I don't well, I see it, this. I wonder what, um, I wonder what keeps people from taking these. Well, it, well, that's the thing. Is it, is it, you take it with you or is it just there for, I mean, hold on. Paradise, I didn't know. Well, it says that it, they were so, they were so popular that each one handed out during the promotion ended up being take just stolen. Huh. So they need to figure out a way to keep them in the store. Okay, so this is a, we are providing this as a service. This is not a giveaway. Right. It's not meant so to be a giveaway. It's not meant to be a giveaway. It's like, this is our, our service to you as a phone person. So you can tweet about your KFC without greasing up your phone. Exactly. Which is really the long run. They want you still to keep talking about the place you're at. So you help in social media, be the advertiser, be the billboard for them. And let's give you a keyboard to do that. It's smart. It's 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 insanely genius. Wow, I can't believe they did this. I'm still blown away from this. Anyways, but it's part of a it's part of an advertising campaign. Uh, no, it's the trade typer. Wow, that's that's cool. I I'd love to see this here. And yeah, I I want to take one home. <laughs> I mean, I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, that's a. I mean, you have to build it into the tray or something. You see, it's completely detachable. So, I don't know. Or build it build it into the table. Yeah, there you go. But I mean, you're 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 not going to have an easy time dismantling a table on. How much? It how much Bluetooth? <laughs> oh, how much of a Bluetooth hackathon is there if they if they do this? Because you know everybody's using Bluetooth in this place, and you can just like walk up to it and and I don't know. Maybe maybe is there is there is there a, a thing where if you pair to something like you can get a virus like bad USB ports or something? I have not heard about that, but I mean, I'm sure there's a first time for everything. I haven't heard many Bluetooth hacks other than people siphoning off data. You, you heard about like the paparazzi and whatnot with the Bluetooth sniper rifles that would could potentially break into the device and, and grab data. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, yes, in theory, I, you could probably inject something into the keyboard also that would key log. So if someone was typing in credentials to Facebook or something, you could probably snap those. Now I wouldn't do much more than launch something that I already had that didn't, that wasn't requiring me to type my user ID and password into and just type out a tweet or type something. I wouldn't type private messages on this. And I think to your point earlier, it, it's all about getting people to talk about things on the social media about where they're at and what they're doing. Awesome. Hey, I got one more cool thing. Let's get to the news and uh, we'll move on so we can talk some video games. But uh, this, is a, this is a live transit map. This is apparently as part as of uh, University of Freeburg. Uh, they've rolled out Travic, the transit visualization client. Now, you know, you know most uh, transit authorities have their vehicles low-jacked. Uh, that they can see exactly where they're at so they can see what's going on. And now they can tap into that and you can watch everything moving in New York City. See, this is what I wish Pittsburgh had. Well, I think this is coming. This is coming. I don't know if you've, you, you've seen. But uh, it's not just Pittsburgh. I, I think I think or it's not just uh, New York. I'm pretty sure that we got all feeds here. And you can actually see all the cities where they do have this. Let's see if Pittsburgh is a part of this. Because they are talking about doing real-time visualization. They don't have Pittsburgh just yet. What, Cleveland has it? Are you serious? Greater Cleveland Regional Transit Authority. Uh, but but this is coming for us. So you'll see, know it's- It's not in real time. See, Cleveland's not real time. And that's where I'm worried that some of these are, so like, what's this one? DC Circular is not real time. Okay, okay, so we get info on here. And you can check so, that, out. so that's where I'm wondering, are they just taking transit information and then, so let's take Pittsburgh, for example. If you knew that the T was in Dormont at 7.12 in the morning, you could calculate its route into Pittsburgh based on its, its start and stop times of when it's supposed to be somewhere and then kind of estimate based on that, right? Yeah. In theory. And, and that's where 
I'm hoping that a lot of these are in fact real time maps and not um, not just estimates based on a uh, a timetable. Right. Right. Does that make sense? And, and it looks like the way things are moving, this looks real time as far as New York City goes, if you follow that. In this but, the, but, and I guess that's my point, though. If, 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 if you just calculated, um, I'm having a hard time with our map getting it to actually, oh, there we go. Um, if you knew what time the trains were supposed to be in a specific location, you could then j just tween the dots, right? Right, right. And that's where I, I'm hoping. And I can't figure out how I got that other one. See, because even on theirs, they're saying like plus four minutes and nine seconds. See, I'm, I'm hoping this is real time. Uh, that's all I'm going to say mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. And they say they do say in the article some of them are based on schedule estimates, but still very mesmerizing to watch. So uh, it's another step to kind of look at those. And you know, the more information we're talking about a data-driven city when we talk about what you're doing in Pittsburgh. Uh, they just unleashed uh, what was the latest one they did? Oh, uh, you, there's now an interactive map in Pittsburgh for uh, paving projects, like to see what's scheduled. So you know, oh, that's cool. you know if your street is going to get taken care of, right? You're not in Pittsburgh. You don't get to check out this cool stuff here, Chilla. Uh, <laughs> Dora, Dora mine, it's like, well, it's a square mile. You know if something's getting paved. Uh, you know, it, it will probably affect your commute <laughs> at that point. But uh, but no, like that again, that taking that data and really kind of putting it out there, and then now we can use it. They had the same thing, snow plows. Uh, when I was uh, going to drive home from after a pay-per-view party one Sunday night, it was snowing out. And I'm like, okay, it's a plow been to our house because our street is the problem, right? And mm -hmm. you could see, and, and, and it actually shows, has, somebody, has a plow been through here in the last so-and-so minutes? And where is the plow right now? and and all that kind of stuff and it was, it was very helpful saying like, okay we shouldn't have a problem here and 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 you know and and there it was it, it was plowed when we came through so and, and that's that's super nice because i i can actually remember a couple times where i i had been out and came home and there was either uh it sleeted and there was ice on the roads or there was there was snow on the roads and i live at the peak of a hill mm -hmm. that's that's downhill on all sides um, so I actually had a, a, a very difficult time actually getting home based on the fact of, of the, the grade of the hill and, and there was no way to get up on any side that wasn't, that wasn't yet plowed. Mm -hmm. um, I actually drove around for 45 minutes trying to find alternative methods to, to, get, to get up the hill to my house. Right, right. Uh, so go check that out. And uh, with that, hey, we got a lot of events coming up. WWC, of course, coming up. I, I put I started putting stuff on my calendar, Chilla, so I can schedule around these things to watch if I can, <laughs> live tweet if I can. Why are all these on Monday? It's killing me. Like a lot of these are popping up on Mondays, and that's when I'm with a client and doing a podcast, and uh, and it's killing me. It's killing me. But uh, uh, all kinds of stuff like that, Google I/O, and we'll have tweets and stuff if you're following Awesome Cast and me, so at Sorgatron Chilla. I'm sure we'll have commentary online as well. Uh, but here in the Pittsburgh area, uh, this weekend. TEDx Pittsburgh um, is uh, is happening here in town. Uh, you can check out TEDxPittsburgh.org. I don't know if they have any tickets left, and they announced their after party as well that you can join them there. Uh, I'll be watching from the live stream at home. I actually got another gig that we're going to be trying to do that day too. Uh, but you can also check out our interview uh, with uh, Chris Daly from the uh, co-organizer from that over on the awesome chat over at awesomecast.net. We also talked to this last week, uh, one of the guys behind Clamor, the 18-second uh quick app that we've been talking about here on the show had a really good talk with him and this week we're talking to uh one of the guys behind the coin op hall of fame and museum up in hopewell township north of town up by the airport and uh having a lot of fun there and uh we're hoping to go out there to their vip kickstarter party and check out what they got going on as well the guitar one of the guitarists from warrant is going to be there and another guy that's a was an 80s uh, uh rock guy uh you can go play pinball with him so uh so please go check those out awesome that'll be launched uh thursday this week and we have uh we're scheduling a few more things for the awesome chat have a lot of fun there if there's anybody you think is awesome in pittsburgh we should talk to please hit me up at sorgatron on the twitters 
Um, also come up, Create Fest, uh, June 10th through 12th. Word Camp Columbus is in July 17th through 19th. PodCamp Pittsburgh Evening with PodCamp is happening this month. I think that's May 23rd, next Wednesday. No, no, 27th, perhaps. I think it's May 27th. We're going to talk to Crystal O'Connor from Libsyn and have that up there. And you can. Uh, we're going to try to get a stream going. And, uh, of course, everything will be filmed and we'll have it online as well. Uh, and... Uh, creators newsletter mini awesome cast please subscribe to any of that stuff we have all the feeds uh starting to come up in stitcher and itunes for the mini awesome cast it's your daily dose of tech news with me doing stuff uh follow sorgatron media on the clamor have a lot of fun there and, and again please subscribe to us on itunes anywhere else uh, but especially itunes it helps a lot to help get the word out there did i miss anything chilla anything else coming up here no i think yeah i think you wrapped it all up excellent and of course my talk today about pinterest instagram and Snapchat, uh, all online at sorgatron.com with slides and the audio from today's presentation. Uh, critique, maybe you'll learn something. I don't know. I get to talk for two hours about those things. Next week, I do the basics of YouTube. We're going to have fun with that one. So uh, with that, again, you can join us live, live.sorgatronmedia.com, live.awesomecast.net, about 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. Follow us at AwesomeCast on Twitter, AwesomeCast on Facebook, the Facebook group, Google+. Plus. Awesomecast at SorgatronMedia.com. Subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and so much more. Chilla, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out, for talking tech with me, having thanks. fun. Thanks for pumping in the video from Studio B. There you go. Bringing in the live feed from Studio B. Live from not far away in Dormont, PA. <laughs> I feel like, are we lazy for like, you're like a mile away from me, yet we're still using Hangout to connect. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I know, I know, hey, I know people at work that they video chat and they're, they're less than 20 yards away. They're at opposite <laughs> sides of the building. It's like texting my wife from the couch. Anyways, <laughs> thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks to our awesome chat room that's been joining us all night long. And uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Getting awesome, we're getting awesome, yeah, that's what I say! This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.